In the woods of Lambay Island, there lives a trickster god named Anzi. He is a nymph of the woods, as Irish as the land and green as the trees abound, adorned in spider silk clothes comprised of a white peasant top and capris. His feet are always bare, so that they're free to always become roots, and his hair is actually leaves and moss. Jackie has always found him interesting, if also a bit annoying. He himself is a remnant of old. Not a god per se, but an embodiment of lava, of fire, ash, and clay, of the volcanoes that once created the island and its bay. They're long dormant now, of course, and he is all that remains. Among them is a flower, or at least he claims to be one. He's green like Anzi, so we can feast on the sun, but paler than him too. With a crown of clovers, what he is actually, Marvin is one of the younger ones, a green fairy that joined them long after the volcanoes dried and island move on. Jackie thinks they're brothers, or close to it, because they both have foliage hair. At the core of the island is a dolmen. Beneath it is a pixie named Jemison, because he lives there. He's a playful being, always dancing and mischievous like Anzi. They get on well, but he's also kind and caring. He always offers his dolmen to Jackie during rains. It's during one of these storms that they encounter a banshee. The sound of its scream echoes down the mountain from its peak up north. Jackie almost douses himself, trying to run up it in a blind panic, to where he knows Andy and Marvin are. Banshees aren't common in Lambe, because they're born of humans, whom died in dismay. Those left to wander the island and scream warnings to those who stray. And there just aren't enough humans living on their island. Dolmens are easily breakable. They're just rocks piled on top of each other. Certainly, the arrangement is stable and stands up against all sorts of storms and aggravations, but it's still just rocks on rocks, with no glue, no sap, no rope. And Jackie is, as much as he's too modest to admit he's a god, powerful. Jemison lets Jackie destroy his home. The large rock that sat on top of the wall-like stones of his megastructure should be able to protect the volcanic being as he storms through the rain, seeking out their fellow inhumans, whom are now also screaming. That's why James let him destroy his home in the first place. That and the fact that Jackie will easily help him rebuild it. Auntie wants to destroy JJ's home out of spite. He never helped fix it though. He grew fruit instead. It was delicious. The scene they stumble upon after stomping through the forest up the mountain is, well, it's a strange one. What they heard was not a banshee. It was a human that tripped. Oh god, there's more of you. The human cowers from them in the dirt, clothing and skin completely soaked. Tears falling down his face as something smelly pours from a bottle in his hand out into the earth beneath him, into the forest that is their true home, and into the ring that is Marvin's house. And suddenly, his screaming makes sense. The human is, strangely, not afraid of Jackie, despite him literally being fire and running through the forest with a giant boulder above him like it's nothing. He seems to be more afraid of them as a whole, or in general principle. Again, strange. Regardless. Yeah, there is. And Jackie's gonna kick your arse for ruining me home. Marvin's faith and trust in Jackie to protect and defend him is endearing, and almost enough to negate him literally using him as a weapon or attack beast. The sprite size. Marv, I don't think he really meant it. But my ring! Jemison, calm and kind as always, is the one to notice this and point it out. He crouches beside the trembling mortal and smiles at him while lifting up the bottle that strangely bears the pixie's name on it. Ah, uh, shite, I wonder. Nancy sighs, running a frustrated hand through his hair. The leaves rustle like they're in the wind, and the human seems comforted by it. It's at least enough to make him pass out. Or maybe the fear just got to him. Breaking Jemison's home turned out incredibly helpful in the end. Jackie can't touch humans because he's literally molten earth. He'd burn them. But he's also the only one both big enough and strong enough to carry someone. Thus, it's the embodiment of lava who carries the human home to a settlement, via the large flat stone that used to be the roof to his kind pixie friend's house, leaving him unconscious and uncouth to the first person who finds him. Thanks for watching. Until next time. All my love. Happy Baltina. He's a nymph of the woods, as Irish. Irish? <laughs>